let's paint up this Chaos Serastus Knight. Welcome to Always Paint the Rivets. I'm joined again today by Rivetus. For anyone who hasn't met him before, he is our friendly neighbourhood space marine. I'd say it was a pleasure to be back, but you keep making me look at these heretic knights. Oh, you've not done your rounds in the training cages today, have you? Well anyway, this is the knight scheme we're looking to replicate. Black armour, this green ghostly feel shining through, bit of red and a good chunk of goldy bronze breaking up the silver parts. And this is our starting point, a fully converted Chaos Serastus Knight. If you haven't seen the conversion, the video is already up on the channel, link is up there right now, but let's get stuck into painting this bad boy. We'll speed through some of the priming and the washes and really get stuck in when we're adding the highlights and adding the detail on the knight that really makes this scheme pop. Okay, let's go. To start with, prime the main skeleton of the knight in a dullish silver. I'm using Dwarven Iron by Two Thin Coats, first time I've actually used this paint here and I actually think it looks really nice, really suits the Chaos Knight vibe because it is a bit duller than things like Lead Belcher and I'm using a just off black colour to prime the armour panels, Death Reaper on this occasion. Apply a mixture of a black and brown wash to give the armour a grimy, dirty, oily kind of look. Leaving the recesses well alone, I just dry brush back some Dwarven Iron just to bring some shine back to the metal parts of the skeleton. To add some extra depth and contrast, I'm adding some recess shade to some of the more exposed parts of the skeleton. You can do this with a dedicated panel liner, wash or contrast paint if you want to. I'm using some black oil paint thinned down with some white spirit. And at this point in time he's still looking a little dull, so let's brighten him up with a slightly shinier silver. And now let's get stuck into some base coating. We'll start by breaking up the silver with some bronze. I'm painting this at the tops of pistons, on the sort of little node bits that seem to stick out, the end of the lance and the sort of power pack bits at the back of the knight. Using a just off black colour, paint the rubber seals around the leg joints and anything that looks like it should be an armour casing, like the power fist that sits behind the shield and no knight is ever complete with its wires and things being painted red. Some of these we will make yellow in a bit to paint some lovely hazard stripes on later. I then painted all the other wires in a solid black and gave all the bronze parts a good wash with Agrax Earthshade. And once you've done that, you'll end up with something that looks a bit like this. Everything does look a little bit dull at the moment, but don't worry, we'll add some real vibrancy to this knight in a minute. Now I was a little nervous about this next step. I am a relatively amateur airbrusher still, but we're going to give it a go. And what I want to do is create a glowing effect to some of the parts of the knight using my airbrush. Using a white ink, I primed a nice even base layer for a green to go on top later. I primed the white ink both sides of the lance, the bits on the shield that I want to be a glowing plasma effect later, and this top power pack thing, kind of imagine that will be something glowing. And although it will be covered by the carapace armour at the top, I think it will kind of look cool with this green glow coming through from underneath. Starting with your darkest green, cover all the parts that you've just primed white. Take your next lighter shade of green, and you want to cover around three quarters of the area you've just covered with your darkest green. Keep going with lighter shades of green and brighter shades of green, right through to the centre of the objects that you're spraying, reducing the amount you cover every single time. And once you're at your brightest colour, put that directly in the centre of each object or where you want the glow to really be centred from. And voila! Once you're done, you should end up with something like this. This knight is really starting to get that glowy green chaos effect. He's starting to look good. Now let's head back to the brush. We're doing some yellow pipes and hazard stripes. Got to be really cool because it rhymes. And then what I'm going to do is add that ghostly green effect to the loincloth of the knight. Starting at the bottom, you want to paint an outline of a rough fire effect. Use your darkest green colour for this, and then slowly paint inside of the colour you've just painted, working your way up brighter greens every single time. The final green you want to use will be your brightest green, and you really just want this around the edges of the loincloth, and that will make the fire look like the hottest part is at the bottom. Follow the same steps to add some glow to the strands of wire that make up the plasma effect on the shield, and we're pretty much done for this glowy green effect on the skeleton of the knight. Skeleton of the Knight, more or less done, some highlighting still to go, let's move on to the armour panels. I'm going to start off by blocking in the main colours on the armour pieces. That's our original silver that we use for the skeleton, and we're going to be applying that to the central part of the pauldrons, all the chains and things, and the neck of the main head of the knight. I then used a solid black to do all the edges of the armour panels, and moved on to blocking in the other colours. Brown for the wooden stakes that have pierced through the top of the carapace armour and the pauldrons and back to the bronze to paint all the spikes that are pointing out from all the armour panels. 
then here's where I've got up to. If you want to invest any time on this model, it's going to be investing more time on these armor plates and panels to make sure that they really stand out. These are the essence of the model after all. Using a bony color, I blocked in all the teeth and tusky things piercing through the armor panels. I also applied it as a decent base coat for this piece of flesh that's hanging down from the pauldron of the night. Now let's tackle this converted chaosy head. I'm looking forward to painting this. I think this will really help this model stand out and look like a proper chaos, Serastus Knight. Get your fat head out of the way, brother. No one can see what on earth you're painting. Yeah, sorry everyone. I'm still a little bit of a noob with my camera work, but you know, I'm learning. I've blocked in the remaining wires and cables sticking out from his head in either red, yellow or bronze. It was then time to whap the airbrush back out. I really wanted that glow effect coming from the grills on both the pauldrons and this face mask. Rinse and repeat is the same process as last time. Whiting through the airbrush first, then green, green, brighter green, 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 to really try and nail that glow effect. And then I was on to highlighting. Homeward stretch now, just highlighting and some details left to go. Really, really close to being finished. This has been a mammoth project, I cannot lie. It's obviously a really big night anyway. He's a huge dude to get ready. And I work full time and this has been probably not the most sensible thing for me to have done with one of the first few videos I've put on the channel. But we're in it, I've loved it. Hopefully you're enjoying the video. Let's get it finished off. Added some more hazard stripes to the yellow pipes and cable work. Added some little green dots right to the center of those already airbrushed bright green parts for the grills on the face mask. The pure white parts of his head were also looking a bit too pristine, so I watered down a little bit of Norn oil, splashed that on. I then moved on to edge highlight the black armour panels as well as the silver parts of the head. Take your time with the edge highlighting, it is definitely worth doing it because the head is such a central point of the model. So take your time, work your way around the head nice and steadily. I'm using a really mid grey colour here to do the edge highlight because I only intend to do one across the entire armour. I could then do some bits around the edges to make it stand out a bit more, but for now I'm happy with just one layer of edge highlight. And here is the finished head. I highlighted up the red cables as well, added that classic white dot to his eye lens and put a bit of gloss varnish on and just spruced up the little skulls that are hanging down from the chains a bit as well. You'll notice towards the edges of the back of his head there's this little green glow effect from the armour as well, I'll show you how to do that in a second on some of the bigger armour panels. For the rest of the armour, all the bronze, bony coloured and wood coloured pieces all got a good wash with Agrax Earthshade. Now it's time for that dirty down magic just to make the verdigris effect on the pauldrons. I literally added a few drops of water to my mix and then splopped it all over the silver part of the pauldrons. I find if you add a few drops of water it sets a little bit lighter than if you just use it straight out of the pot. And through the beauty of editing you can now see that as this paint dries how clearly that verdigris effect starts to develop. Now I'm going to add that green ghostly effect to all of the armour panels. How I did this was pretty much the opposite of edge highlighting really. For edge highlighting you're looking for the highest and most raised points of the model and the edges. What we're looking for here is the deepest parts of the recesses. So anything that's deeper and inset into the armour panel is what we want to paint. Paint basically all of those crevices and nooks in your deepest darkest green and then we'll slowly use brighter greens to get that glow effect and this time it'll be coming from the corners and the deepest points of the armour. Therefore it will look like the glow is almost coming from underneath the armour panels and bursting out. Back to my mid grey tone for my edge highlight on the armour panels. I did this around every single edge I could find. In particular for the spikes that I converted and glued on, I wanted this to hide my conversion shame a little bit. So I made sure that I highlighted those edges as best as I could and just makes it look a bit more incorporated into the model and a little bit less of a dodgy conversion from me. Next up of course, we can't forget to paint the rivets, can we Rivetus? About time. I've been waiting this entire video for this moment. Oh yeah, baby. I mean, I get excited about it, but you just need to calm yourself down. Right, speed run. All we need to do is repeat that process for all the rest of the armor panels. Ah, uh, uh, there is quite a lot of them. There's only one way to handle this. Armor panel painting video montage. Ghostly greened, highlighted, riveted up, I think they look quite nice. 
I think on some bits you can kind of tell where I've added bits of green stuff and converted things, but overall I think it blends in pretty well and looks like a, I guess a genuine Chaos Knight rather than something that I've converted. And then I was back to the skeleton, edge highlighting all of the bronze parts that I wanted to stand out, as well as the most exposed silver bits. I didn't want to overdo this because if you highlight every single bit of the skeleton it is going to take you a while. Just focused on the arms, the bits of the legs that you can clearly see. So we could then get on to the final part of the colour scheme, which was adding the decals. I want to use this pointed star for one side of one of the pieces of leg armour. I then want to use one of the beastly head things to give this knight almost like a unique symbol and character. I had to trim this pointed star a little bit just to make sure it fitted nicely onto the armour panel. I just chopped a little bit of the straight part away just to shorten the length of the arrows. I wiggled the end of the arrow into place just making sure it looked nice and tidy against the star that was already there. I then got some of the slightly larger runic symbols that came with the Chaos Knight set and added these to the bottom of the other side of the leg armour. And I added the smaller runic symbols just to the front of the carapace armour. The big beasty face bit I added to the centre of the loincloth. I also just chucked an 8 pointed star behind this again just to reinforce that chaosy look. To make the decals really look incorporated into the night and really tie in with my broader night colour scheme, I painted over half of this beastly guy's face on the loincloth. You'll need to chuck a couple of coats over it just to make sure that the decal is properly hidden. And then with the black paint still out, I chipped away at some of the other decals on the carapace armour. This just made them look a bit torn, a bit ragged. At the end of the day, this is a Chaos Knight. Nice shiny pretty decals doesn't really go with the Chaos Knight vibe. And after I'd finished chipping away at all of the decals, I ended up with this. These are my finished armour panels, so the really selling point of this knight. And all that's left to do is assemble this bad boy. This has felt like such a big project, but oh man, I am so, so happy with how it's turned out. This was definitely by far my biggest challenge yet in terms of conversion, and it was actually the biggest model I've ever painted. So both of those things combined mean I've spent an awful lot of time doing this thing. But man, I think he looks great. I'm really proud of how he's turned out. I hope you've enjoyed this video of getting this guy painted as well as the conversion video. And yeah, thank you for being part of this journey with me. And remember, always paint the rivets. See you soon.